Okay. Hey. <laughs> Sorry, my throat. Sorry about that. How are you guys doing? Ah, <laughs> uh, we're doing great. Oh my goodness. I mean, if any time would be the time for for this to happen would be now. I mean, because he talked about, you know, a uh, uh, suddenly, right? That there would be so much chaos and then boom, a uh, suddenly. Um, we're living in exciting times, aren't we? Say the least. <laughs> Say the least. Oh my goodness. Well, you know, I wanted to share a, a, a couple things first um, before we start digging in uh, so, into some news and so forth is that um, Alan, I just want to make sure that you all know that we're not lawyers. OK, we're not giving any legal advice here. Uh, neither is John. Um, no legal financial advice. But we're giving and sharing our opinion and what we've researched and what we've found uh, in our own hearts and minds to be true. So um, and that's what we are. We're truth seekers. And uh, so once we find out some things that actually, you know, are according to God's word um, and we're seeing things around us come into play, the puzzle piece is coming into play. We we thought, you know what, we need to to share this with the people. I mean, if you look at what the word says, right, the wealth of the wicked has been stored up for the righteous. And I believe that's God people, God's people. And if we look at um, John. Uh, executive order 13818 by President Trump um, that uh, has also renewed, right? So we're still in that. And that has to deal with those that have uh, been involved with corruption. Boy, we're finding out those people that have been corrupted, aren't we? Oh, it's, yeah, it's a powder keg and it's just going to continue to leak out precipitously as this year goes on. Yeah, it's, uh, but but we're seeing this, uh, I mean, biblically, this is a biblical event and it's all coming to play. Uh, the puzzle pieces are all coming, uh, you know, to play in, in order. So um, I thought I'd start kind of maybe at the beginning where we have a lot of new people that have joined us. Um, uh, what does Basil 3 have to do with everything coming into play here? Sure. Well, Basil III pretty easily and in, in most in its most basic terms is simply this. It forces the banks, particularly the tier one banks, your Wells Fargo, your Chase, your JP Morgans, those folks, it forces them to show on their balance sheets transparency as, of how much gold and silver they're actually holding. Because in the new system, they're going to have to have real tangible assets to stay in business, stay in commerce. So if it reveals that they don't have that, you're going to see a lot of banks going away. So in, in essence, in shortest terms, that's what it really, that's why it's so significant. Yeah, sure. So you mentioned new system. What what new system are you talking about? Well, again, like last time when we talked, we're paralleling off the SWIFT system, which is a funny name because it's anything but. And we're <laughs> going to the new quantum financial system, which is a blockchain-based digital system. <clears throat> and I understand some people have you know reservations about that, but ultimately for God's people in the short term, and I say short term, three to four years plus, <clears throat> depending on how things you know go, uh, that will be a good thing for God's people to take advantage of <clears throat> the different wealth transfer buckets, right? We've talked about with the currencies and the bonds and cryptos and metals and <clears throat> oil, the right oil stocks and, and other things. So uh, the new system is going to basically dovetail over the old. It's going to be a blockchain system that that can do trillions of transactions within a second in real time. So it's lightning fast and it's incredibly transparent. So everything can be tracked on there, which again, long term is not good, but short term to catch the bad guys and catch nefarious uh, would be business owners or, or, or would be people doing business in a, in, a, in a bad way. It will be good to kind of ferret them out. Okay, but it, uh, on the bad side of it, does that mean that everything that we do is is basically tracked? Well, yes and no. I mean, if you think about it now, when you swipe your debit card, your credit card, they know where you are. So it's already we're already kind of halfway there. Long term, that will be the case. That's why you don't want to be on the B system. That's why you want to become, as we talked about last time, your own central bank, <clears throat> whereby you own your own land, precious metals. Uh, tan, you know, tangible things of value, grow your own food, uh, port out your own energy, having a water source, potentially hydroelectric, you know, tapping into <clears throat> your own your own personal grid, 
where you can be as independent and as autonomous as possible is, is going to be the key over the next, you know, four or five, you know, four or five years while we have this, this grace period in the transition, because thankfully President Trump is going to be <clears throat> cessating that from happening right now. So when he's optically back, he'll hold the line down so that God's people can kind of go through the portal, so to speak. Okay. All right. Now you talked about, um, baskets of, of currency, um, baskets, uh, I, I guess that would include XRP, XLM and other digital currencies. What, what, what other, um, currencies are in that basket? A lot of people hear, you know, dinar or, or, uh, dong and stuff like that. What other currencies are, are in that basket? Well, first of all, let's since we're doing a rudimentary overview of the re or the global reset, let's let's take that point that you made and, and kind of touch on that for a moment. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, the buckets, so to speak. I, I was just talking about the wells of the wealth transfer, right? It's a lot of people think that it's just <clears throat> just currency or it's just metals, and no, it's it's so much more vast and deep than people can ever appreciate, uh, and that's why God is giving His people time to get into this at different, uh, we'll call it freeway intersection points of the reset, right? <clears throat> so there's 209 countries and provinces total. So it isn't just the dinar, it isn't just the dong, it isn't just the Zim bond, it's not just the Indonesian rupiah or the Thai bot, it's every, <clears throat> every, every part of the world, including the Lebanese pound, which took a year and a half ago, took a, an absolute beating. Uh, I was here in South Florida with my mom for her birthday and uh, went into a store and talked to, struck up a conversation with somebody who's from Lebanon. And I, I asked them about that. And they said, oh, yeah, we took an absolute pounding. I said, why do you think they did that? And she said, well, they're obviously going to rebuild it. I'm like, yeah, that's what I think, too. So it's it's the entirety of the world. that That's really what I'm trying to say. <laughs> yeah, I, it seems like it's a, a total like overhaul, I mean, of everything. So getting rid of man's creation and getting back to what God intended from the very beginning. Correct. That's exactly right. It's a complete overhaul, reset, and restructuring, if you like, of the entire financial system. These countries and BRICS is demonstrating that really, really well. Uh, BRICS, again, stands for Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa. And within those letterings of the an anagram is comprised of several countries inside, housed inside those, those different letters. Uh, right now, <clears throat> BRICS has about 40 countries eagerly waiting to get on board, one of which I'm pretty excited about is uh, Zimbabwe, and uh, Serbia is just about to get on board as well. We know Egypt is there, we know Iran is there. <clears throat> so BRICS is making a pretty demonstrative case to decouple from the dollar and trade um, asset for asset, something real for something real, instead of, you know, fake printed up, you know, numbers on a screen that have no intrinsic value whatsoever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, uh, we were talking to some friends not too long ago. Uh, we were having dinner and we brought up some of the currencies. And I, I, I was, I guess, because we've been following it for 14 years, but you would assume that most people know about that, but yet they have never, they mm -hmm. had never heard about it or anything about how how to follow it, how to get involved, whatever. Uh, you want to talk, touch a little bit about maybe where, I don't know, we say where to go or what to do or... Yeah, for some people who um, do not have currency um, and, and now they're just learning about the Zim and so forth, um, uh, where would you recommend that uh, that they go to purchase? Because I know that there's uh, several places. Um, I'll, I'll, should I mention the last place mm -hmm. that got shut down? Sterling, um, mm. of, uh, Atlanta, <clears throat> Georgia, and um, but there are still some reputable places to where people can purchase this. Because I remember we could uh, get it from Wells Fargo years ago. You know, so yeah. Uh, let me let me say one thing before yeah, we. Sure. we where John goes into that. We don't get one cent from any of these sites or no. anything mm -hmm. by telling you we're simply informing you. We don't we don't get anything from them. So know that. Yeah, we just want people to be blessed. Yeah, absolutely. I'm I'm right there with you and your sentiment. <clears throat> yeah. So back in five, seven, ten years ago, you could go into 
Wells Fargo, JP Morgan, and you could easily pick up Dinar and you could also pick up Dong and the scarcity of that is getting more and more. And there's, a, I think we touched on this <clears throat> on your last show, but there's a primary reason for that because there were a lot of uh, self-appointed experts, gurus out there saying, oh, it's today, 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 tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. It's going to be this rate, this rate, this rate. And it was confusing people. <clears throat> and so people were running to the banks going, where's my reset? Where's my reset? And the bank's like, what are you talking about? And right. so the banks didn't want to deal with it anymore. So they just understandably summarily shut it down and started working with, you know, private and treasury backed license here in America, I should specify licensed treasury dealers who would be expertly adept at handling that and it would take the pressure off of the banks to kind of, you know, redirect it <clears throat> to another place. So that's why, I mean, there may be still some banks you can get it, but it's, it's harder and harder to get. It just depends where you live. <clears throat> in terms of where to go, it also depends where you live. You know, on my channel, we have people from, and I'm assuming with yours as well, we, I, mostly I, it's comprised of U.S. residents, but uh, we have people all over the world, right? So uh, we have a couple different sites that we recommend that people can check out. One of them is Chakra, C-H-A-K-R-A, energy.com. And uh, they can go to that and they can purview because what's nice about that is it ships anywhere in the world because I have people say all the time, hey, I'm in Canada. I can't get it from U.S. dealers or this particular dealer. So that's a, a nice sort of, you know, catch all for that person. Uh, and they ship anywhere, in, <clears throat> excuse me, anywhere in the world. And also um, you will be able to get bonds as well as the currency. So it's not, you know, sort of itemized out. It's collective. But there's a lot of great, uh, <clears throat> a lot of great places out there. I just recommend people do their diligence, do their research, make some phone calls, ask some questions, uh, find out how long they've been in business, what their customer service is like, um, you know, how many, what type of denominations they carry, you know, because I, I have a mix of things. I have larger and then I have smaller denominations. Because when we last spoke, my recommendation to people <clears throat> is to just, and Alan, you asked about this before, where to go and what to do. So this kind of ties into that. Um, go into the bank. It's, it's, you know, I, we've said this last time, what is a redemption center? It's a bank. Right. If there is no redemption centers. I mean, I, I, and that's a whole other subject, but <laughs> just go to the bank, build a relationship with a wealth manager, take yeah. in one note. If you have smaller notes, you have more leverage versus if you have one large note or two large notes, you're stuck with what you've got. So if you have the time to prepare, I recommend breaking it up build that relationship, <clears throat> see if you feel trustworthy with them, ask to see the back screens. They can show that to you. They're, they just, it's, it's like when you go into a restaurant, if you don't know they have an off menu item, you don't ask and they don't say. So it's, it's kind of much like that, but that's, that's just some recommendations as far as what to do and where people can go to get the various currency and bonds. Yeah. I love what you said in regards to get to know those at the, the bank that you, um, you know, that you have your funds in, um, like Wells Fargo, Chase, and so forth. Uh, I know that, you know, when we were first learning about this, I was like, I wonder if this is really true, you know? And so I went over to the Wells Fargo um, uh, branch, kind of by where we live. And, and I said, I want to talk to the wealth manager, you know? So we made an appointment and we talked to him and, and, uh, and, and he was basically, when it happens, I'm here for you. And I'm like, oh, really? So this is really true, you know, and he says, absolutely, you know, so, um, and people are finding that out now, you know, we're hearing so many things that coincide with, with the truth of this happening, right, babe? Yeah, and then another bank we went into, the guy's like, oh, that's, you know, nonsense and all that stuff, but so it, it, it's really the upper echelon of the banks that right. really know the about premier it. they don't tell the average teller right I, I just want to say something on that real quick um because i get this question all the time if you go to your down the street or up the street or whatever your main street banker and they say what you just said alan one of three things is happening either they don't know they're lying to you or they don't want you to know yeah. but th that is complete nonsense because i've dealt with private bankers and wealth managers who would talk to me over a period of time, because I've been with Wells Fargo for over a decade. And they've, you know, I can get things out of people in a, in a good way once we have a, a relationship built. And they're like, yeah, 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 this is one of the places. I said, I know you guys renovated this place for the, the wealth transfer. And they're like, yeah, exactly. They didn't bat an eye when I said that. And so <clears throat> when you find the right person, and that's the key, just like anything else in life, they will divulge to you what is reality. But don't be uh, discouraged or dissuaded if you run the, to somebody at the bank that tells you that. That's that's just one of the scenarios typically that that's in play. 
Yeah, that's that's good. So um, when um, Iraq officially reinstates their currency to the Forex market, I mean, d um, what are some of the signs of, of that happening? Well, you'll see it, number one, like you just said, on the Forex market and CBI, the Central Bank of Iraq, it'll, it'll change. But what you want to be looking for, it's a good question, actually, is you want to see a number of things. You want to see them actually implement, not just talk about, but implement reforms, the taxes and tariffs at the border, the hydrocarbon law, the HCL 140, everybody who's been in this knows what I'm talking about. <clears throat> it denotes a percentage of the oil revenues that go to the respective uh, factions of Iraq. They have different groups like the Shiites, the Sunnis, the Kurds. The Kurdistan region is probably one of the largest uh, factions of people in Iraq. So when those people actually get paid, <clears throat> that would be a, a big indicator. Uh, another one would be, we talked about it, you started the show with it, when things seem at their worst or appear to be at their worst, and we're not there yet, but we're getting there pretty rapidly, as you as you can see. <clears throat> when you see uh, Iran become more inflamed in the Red Sea and the Strait of Hormuz as it relates to the supply chain, specifically oil and all the various supplies that we use every day, <clears throat> that's another sign. Another telltale will be when Israel makes their grave mistake and hits the secret nuclear power plants of Iran. Uh, but the thing that Iraq needs to do is they just, Sudani needs to announce that they're done and they're, they're doing this and, and just, you know, drop the gauntlet and be done with it. Do those reforms, get it into parliament while all these other distractions I mentioned are happening. They need to decouple from their big brother, Iran. That's mm -hmm. paramount, right? Because yeah. Iran, the Iranian proxy government in Iraq, much like our deep state administration, whatever you want to call it, is not the real deal. They're not Iraqis, they're Iranians, okay? Uh, and another one, another sign is that they need to get rid of our U.S. military, not in the sense of they're going to have 2,500 to 3,000 uh, troops there for redundancy and training and protection, but I'm saying they need to say to the U.S., we're not playing your game anymore, we're, we're reinstating, right? Because the U.S. does not want this to happen, they hate competition. But we need to be watching China and Russia. Two reasons. They really need it because their economy is taking a hit. I don't know if you guys saw this, but I think it was last week reported on my Telegram. If you guys are on my Telegram, so you can vouch for this. I, we source our information copiously every day. I mean, it's put a lot of articles out there for people to, who will take the time and read. It's all out there in, in plain sight. But uh, China's CSI 1000, that would be the equivalent of our Dow, uh, dropped 30%, almost, I think it was 28 to 30%, major hit for them. Yeah. So they're in trouble. And so, you know, Russia was actually voted by the IMF this year to be um, the number one economy in the world like they were in 2022. Interesting, reprise, right? Mm. So we need to see that. And then um, we need to see Iraq come off a program rate. A program rate is supposed to be a temporary holding post like like welfare and taxes was supposed to be in America. And then once they get their tentacles in, they don't like to let go. And they've been on this corrupt program. It's, it's not the real rate. So when people say that Iraq is a scam or they say it's not real, they don't do their homework and they don't understand conceptually that Iraq is not advertising their real rate. They're advertising a false program rate. So those things have to happen in our estimation for this to go off. Mm. Wow, very, very interesting. So, yeah, yeah go ahead, Ben. No, the world's in trouble. Japan's economy. Yeah, Germany's something has economy. to happen. Yeah, I mean, it's right. it, really. Now, Japan, I'll ask you this. Yeah. Uh, you know, people talk about the, the stock market crash, crashing. What, what's your take on that? Sorry, I was just muting so you could finish your point. Um, yeah, there's two schools of thought with that. I, I interviewed this month, I don't know if you guys saw Greg Manorino and Bill Holter, and these guys are financial, you know, menses when it comes to this. They're, they're, they're financial mavens at the very top. And it's interesting because they have similar, yet very two divergent points of view on this subject. Bill Holter believes that it does not matter which country goes first, because once they go, they're all going to go in a three-day domino, that you're going to go home on a Friday, people who... <clears throat> not, I'm not saying your audience, I'm just saying in general, you know, the arrogant and the proud types, because we don't have any of those in the world, <laughs> are, uh, are going to get their 401k or their pension statement and they'll read and go, well, I'm rich, I'm all good, I got mine. And then Monday, they can't get in the banks, their stuff shut down, 
and they're getting a 90% a haircut on what they thought they worked so hard for was never really theirs because all they owned was the paper, right? right? So, <clears throat> so Bill Bill's contention is that it's just going to be a very suddenly, to your point, kind of a moment. Greg Minorino feels that they're going to be able to prop this up the rest of the year. If you're asking me, I think we're going to have to see, and I said this last time, I think we're going to have to see at least a 50% correction. It's, it's known typically as what's called a flash crash, right? Mm -hmm. It's a resetting of things. I don't see, to your point, Alan, how the world could be in so much peril and not see any repercussions. Now, they're going to try to prop the market up because they can't prop up the housing market. Right. They can't prop up the commercial real estate. The only thing they can try to prop up is the stock market to try to, to distract people. People aren't stupid. They they look at their paychecks. They're working harder. They're getting less. They go to the grocery store. They go to the gas pump. And they're getting hosed, no pun intended, everywhere they go. And people can see it. They're awake. Mm -hmm. um, so I personally think we're going to see at least a 50% correction. And I think next year... It's the whole body. If it doesn't happen this year, the bottom falls completely next year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Let me ask you this because uh, I know we've talked about it before, but we get this a lot. Um, <clears throat> they're going to say, well, the dollar is going to devalue 40% or whatever it is. So when I go in to exchange what the fiat for the new uh, gold back, does that mean I get 60 cents on the dollar? It's one for one, isn't it, John? Yeah, it is. And here's why. Because number one, even when the dollar, as the dollar continues to devalue, they can try to prop it up artificially. And that, you know, I know it's at, I think it was at either 104 or 105 today on the index, but that doesn't matter. That's all artificial anyway. They're, they're rigging this whole thing. It, it, this, God is going to give his people time, just like we said, to get into these various wealth transfer mechanisms. Similarly, he's going to give his people time to get the best value for it. You'll get one to one. But my advice to people, and I said this last time, I'll repeat it again, is get out of the dollar into tangible assets as quick as you can. The minute you exchange, have a plan and a plan to act. Don't wing it when you get there. Know exactly how much you have, you know, the estimate of the rate. They'll tell you the actual rate when you're there, obviously. And then when you get paid, they're going to say, okay, where are you, where are we putting it? What do you want to do with it? Have a plan. Well, I want this to go here and this to go here. And you know what I mean? Like, one of the first things I'm doing is buying land and markers down in Tennessee with my real estate agent. I'm just opening up a joint account at Farmers and Merchants over there. It's been over over 100 years in that area in Franklin. Uh, I'm getting medals from three different people because taking delivery can be an issue. I mean, people have to think about the fact that it's not just the cost of things, right? If you can't take delivery of it, what difference does it make, right? But um, that I'm going to be upping in certain cryptos. So I'm going to be doing what I've been doing all along, strategically spreading out. Now, the other thing you can do, interesting, we were talking about militia man to your, your uh, point earlier about, uh, you know, JP Morgan and such and, and what they're doing uh, in terms of, you know, having client outreach and getting prepared for this. Um, it's my understanding, I, I don't know this for sure, but it's my understanding that there is a possibility that you can exchange out of the dollar into gold and silver and other metals. So if that's the case, that I would also be incorporating that as well. Just, just be ready to move. In the first month after I exchange, I'm going to have all my markers down like that because I've been preparing the whole time. So that's why we're doing these shows so that people can get proactive and not be reactive. Amen to that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let me let me ask the uh, this. Is this another question? Yeah. A separate. Okay. So hold that for a second if you have to write down, babe, real quick because I wanted to continue no, with what he said. <laughs> Is that. <clears throat> Being proactive is so key, meaning that say that you're looking at a house, get the relationship with the realtor beforehand so that you can have things prepared already. You know, know what you're going to do. Um, uh, what, what's that one minister, babe, you always talk about, about having a plan ready? He said, oh, I'm, I don't want to talk about finances unless I see your business plan. Yeah. 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 What was his name? Mike Murdoch. Yeah, Mike Murdoch. Okay. So, but it is true. I mean, we need to have all that in order. It's it's so key. And I am going to plug this, if you don't mind. Um, it is our show, so I'm going to do it. <laughs> um, upfrontgold.com. Um, it is a uh, a new platform for gold and silver 
at cost. It's pretty amazing, guys. So go check that out since we're talking a little bit about or mentioning gold and silver. Okay, so go ahead. No, I, I was listening to a financial thing the other day, and they were saying, um, should I invest in get a house now or it, the, amount, the, the value of the house is maybe reduced? you know, 30, 40%. And what, you know, instead of a million dollar house, it's valued to 600,000, which isn't that bad because your, your, ta your property taxes go down too, but, or should they wait, but should they do get a, I know land is one thing, but housing, you know, a lot of people have a house picked out already, or they want yeah. one. What's your, what's your thought on that, John? <clears throat> I had thought that, but then as I, as I re-researched and talked to some people I really trust and pondered Alan, it's actually going to be the opposite. I just talked about this very subject, very timely on your part with Greg Manorino once again uh, earlier this month on our show. And his, his point is that uh, I asked him, when are they going to prop the interest rates up? They're going to do three interest rate cuts this year. And I thought, me, I was a little surprised it wasn't this month. He wasn't because he has a bigger purview than I do because he's a, he's a broker, which is why I asked him. And he, he thinks it's going to be somewhere between April and June will be the first one. And it'll be another three months and another three months right? All the way up to what they want to do with the election cycle, which is a whole separate matter, just a point of contention with that subject. But it's actually, when they drop those rates, it's going to skyrocket things uh, temporarily. It's going to make houses go up. So I personally, what I, you have, here's a great, it, it's a great question you're asking. It's a great discussion piece. I, I talk about this with my friends all the time. You have to measure against time and money, right? So Use you guys as an example. You're a married couple. You've got your kids. You've got your grandkids. You're situated where you are. If you were to buy a house, you would have the time because um, you've already done the things that you wanted to do in that respect, right? But if if let me rephrase that, it's about money for you. For me, because I need to move and build my studio and you know want to have a family and do all those things, it's about time. So it's measuring time against money is really what it comes down to. So you need to ask, I would ask myself if I were listening, what is my objective here by buying a new house? Am I doing this uh, because I'm concerned about the cost of the house? Am I good where I am? Do I have to move? Can I leverage my position for another you know, six months before I move? If you're in a position where you have to move, like I'm in an urgency to do, then money isn't the issue, it's time. Mm -hmm. If you can do that, great. If you can't, well, you're going to have this money, so you won't have to worry about it anyway. We're not, we're not going to be buying houses anymore to flip and make profit and try to right. rob Peter to pay Paul. That's an old central bank ideological mindset that we're transitioning away from. But anyway, to your question, it, it's really time against money, I think, is a determining factor. But when they bring those rate cuts down, it will temporarily kick the housing market up because they're going to try to make it look as favorable as possible. But then the bottom is inevitably going to fall anyway. Mm, wow. Good point. Yeah, that is a great point. Um, so, uh, you know, what, what can people really expect in the next couple of months? I know we talked about this a little bit before that we kind of think that March is, is a pivotal uh, month uh, with things going to happen in both directions, you know? So um, how can people prepare? So it's so another good broad ranging question, but it's good. That's what you I got. know, sorry you, about that. <laughs> thanks for taking it easy on me. <laughs> glad, you have, glad you have confidence. Um, you're going to see more bank failures. You're going to see more layoffs. Last week, we reported about Nike dropping 2% of their workforce. That doesn't sound like a lot, but you're talking about a company with what, hundreds of thousands of people. That's more than most companies have in a smaller grassroots um, setup. So at 2% for a company of that stature is pretty significant. And we talked about what's happening with China, with the, the stock market. Um, it's just going to get, it's going to look worse and worse and worse. You're going to see people, like Bill Holter said, people are going to get to their breaking point. Mm -hmm. They're going to get really stressed and really ticked off. They need to just take a breath, especially your community, they need to take a breath, look at their plans. What are they doing well? What could they improve, right? What if there's any discretionary income at all that they could, as an example, I don't, I don't know where everybody's at in their financial situation, but if you have somebody who, you know, buys their coffee every day at, at name your company, right? Do they really need that coffee? Could they make that at home? Could they save that 
you know, four or five dollars a day, it's twenty five to hundred dollars a month adds up in that scenario, right? And people just don't have to nitpick me; just play the scenario out. It's a hundred dollars. You could buy silver with that. You could buy XRP. You could buy that's a good point. Fractions of gold. You could buy fractions of of a lot of things. Um, just look at what people. What people can do to prepare is is they should have been preparing all along the way. This community especially. But if if they haven't, just do the best you can. You know, get in the game. And to your point, Alan, I want to touch on this earlier. I, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, but you brought up a really important point about the people you're having. I think you said you were having dinner with and had no idea about the currencies. That is such an underrated point because I say on my show all the time to my followers that um, 99% of the public, public has absolutely no idea this is happening. And even one tenth of that 1% know how to move and be successful <clears throat> because there's going to be a fair amount of people who try to game the system in this and get a private deal or get a backdoor deal or go with some group rate or, or you know, an 800 number and they're going to get taken. There's going to be a lot of people who are going to get bamboozled by this and they don't want to hear that, but that's the real reality. Not what the, I mean, how many times do you have to have somebody say to you, did anybody ever hear the story of the boy who cried wolf today, 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 or I'm sorry, the, the, you know, oh, the wolf, the wolf, the wolf. I mean, after the second time, you should have been like, you know what, I'm out. I'm not yeah. trusting this guy. There's no credibility. So why do people need to be fed with lies and stuff that tickles their ears? I mean, the best medicine is the truth, which, you know, Johnny 32 sets you free yeah. and get the truth, like what we're doing, then you can actually win and succeed and get excited about that because you've had a plan, a plan to act, and you've trusted God's plan for you in Jeremiah 29, 11. Amen. So that's my suggestion there. Yeah, that's really good. Um, trust, uh, you, you know, we hear a lot about trust the plan, you know, trust the plan, but really trust God's plan for us because, it, I mean, it's biblical. Uh, again, if you go back to the verse, you know, the wealth of the wicked, right? It's all biblical. So if we just trust in him and hear his voice, we'll be guided by the Holy Spirit in the right direction. So do you, uh, uh, another question, do you feel that this is going to be another Kuwait deal because, you know, in Kuwait, they basically said, Hey, you know, um, yeah, we're not doing this. And then boom, three days later, it revalues. So is this going to be like another Kuwait deal? It's like, we're reading each other's minds. It's like an <laughs> innate intuitive thing. No. Cause I've said to people, this is, this is Kuwait 2.0 on steroids for the entirety of the world. That was one little region. This is the entire globe. Um, they also didn't, <clears throat> They, they let that thing float and it didn't level out as, as much as they had hoped. Um, so they're going to get that right this time. That also was on a paper platform. This will be on a digital asset back platform, right? So yes, it'll, it'll uh, excuse me, it'll be very much in that respect, a Kuwaiti re repeat, but now, you know, for the entirety of the world. And uh, it's, I mean, <laughs> I, Again, I just think about Ephesians 3.20. This thing is going to be so much bigger and more vast than people realize. It's, it's, it's massive, the amount of blessings God's going to do, because he has so much work for us to do. Like Kim said, feeding the poor, the lonely, the hungry, the needy, uh, different initiatives and passions that people have had all their lives to do, but have been hamstrung by a, a nine to five or a 10 to six slave job, <clears throat> keeps them in a box and they can never you know, really break free to their true calling that is not going to be the issue anymore. Um, <clears throat> you know, and again, I go back to what I said to you last time, my personal recommendation is I'm not saying everybody, but a lot of people are so fixated on date and rate, date and rate, but like this dogmatic thing. Don't be worried about that. Yeah. Focus on what your plan is going to be when it happens. Yeah. If somebody handed you $10 million today, would you know what to do with it? Or would you just fall apart on the floor and tatters because you just don't even know where to go? Right. You have to have a plan for this stuff. I mean, you know, number says, you know, a man's, uh, a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children's children. To do that, you have to have a legacy fund. You have to have a, a long-term plan. One That's of the things that the Chinese are very good at is being patient and strategic. They wait you out. You know, they, they're not going to, they're not into instant gratification like our society has been. They're very strategic and we need to be likewise. Yeah, I agree with that. You know, you said something really important, too, is that um, what the Lord is allowing us to do is to truly 
take care of, like you said, the poor and what Kim said, um, the needy, um, the widows, um, the trafficked children, you know, that have been trafficked and so forth. Um, see, and this should have been done by the church a long time ago. It should have been done by the church, but they gave it over to the government, right? Yeah, I let me make a point here because okay. I, I was around a lot of missionaries at one time. And they're always asking you to sow into their orphanage or whatever. I, mm -hmm. My advice to you is go see the orphanage for yourself. So see where your money is going. That's Don't so blindly just give because, you know, I, one thing we learned real, you know, early on was I studied all the lottery winners, what they did right and what they did wrong. And they get these heart you know, letters that my mother's going to die if I don't get, you know, so much money by, you know, next week. It's, I mean, it really, it yeah. really pulls on your emotions. So um, if you're going to give to a humanitarian project or whatever it is, go there, or know about it. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. A absolutely. So do, do your research and, uh, and you know, and, and we're here. Uh, you know, to pray for you, to to guide you as well. Um, check out John's uh, Telegram site. You know, he has a lot of stuff going on, a lot of uh, resources, information. Check that out. He'll, he'll guide you in that arena too. Um, I'm going to put some links down below to uh, some of what he said in regards to where you could purchase the currency. Um, we, we have dealt with uh, another uh, currency broker, um, Exchange of America. They've been good to us. Um, and, um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff, so we'll put it down below. So all you have to do is just, you know, hit the hyperlink and boom, and you're there. So before we go, is there anything else, John, that you wanted to pinpoint to make sure that people have a grasp of, of what's going on? I mean, it should be patently obvious now to most people that we're, we're at a, uh, we're at a tipping point right? It's pretty untenable. And if you're not serious by now, you better get serious. You better get your game face on with God, go in your prayer room, go on your walks, do what you got to do and start working with the Holy Spirit about what your plan should be, you know, and, you know, everybody is in a different place here, right? Some people are going to have exceedingly high amounts of wealth. Some people will have good amounts. Some people have more modest amounts. It's not it's not a race, right? So just stay in your lane. Don't worry about what your neighbor's doing or what your uncle or your cousin's doing that has this, you know, just focus on where God has you, right? And and too often in the world, and especially in the Christian community, we succumb to the pressure of trying to keep up with the Joneses. Oh, my, you know, so-and-so is doing this or so-and-so at church is doing that. No, it, it just stay on your your walk with God and how you came to know the Lord was very customized and individual. Mm -hmm. So too is this, right? Yeah. And just stay on that path with Him, and stay you know stay laser focused and straight ahead. It's a it's a day by day process. I, I liken this scenario to being in the middle of a war zone with landmines, and you don't when you don't know when they're going to go off. You just have to walk gingerly around them. Be prepared to get ahead of them as much as you possibly can, and know when they they go off. Have your your plan to to move forward. And again, this is not we don't do I don't do you don't do spirit of of fear. It's all about faith. Oh, that's right. But it's all about preparation and just common sense. You know, I mean, you don't need. I said this last time. I'll say it again since you gave me the last word. You don't need a humanitarian fund. You are your own kingdom fund. If God gave you this money or he made access for you, that consider that your, your permission to move forward and where he's tasked you to, to be and what to do, right? Yeah. So you don't need to be a part of a humanitarian fund. You don't need to go into the bank with a 28-page business plan or a 200-page binder, but they're not worried about that. All they want to know is, is the currency legit and are you legit? If you are, you're fine. That's all they care about. It's business. It's just an exchange, right? They're going to make a 1% basis point, which equates to about $100,000 per transaction, whether it's one note or a billion notes makes no difference. It's, a, the, it's, an, all, it's an all you can eat rate. And, and that's that. There, there's no, 
I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this, but this, this is what is being said out there for people. There's no alien in the bank that's going to read your heart light. There's no <laughs> monitor they're going to hook you up to to see if your intentionality of your heart is pure. I mean, it's 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 comical. I mean, it's it's it would be if it wasn't so embarrassing, it'd be comical. I mean, it's there's people saying that stuff, and I'm just like, I know. I'm just like, really, really, and, you know, and and it it makes it hard for our community to be taken seriously. Exactly. When people are subscribing to that, it's business. It's yes, it's life changing. Yes, it's prodigious, but at the end of the day, it's still just business. It's a business deal. They're not trying to be your best friend. They're not trying to be your worst enemy. It's a service, right? You give them something, they give you something, you go on your way. Um, I did hear that you will be able to get some cash. I don't know why you would want to carry five or $15,000 of cash. Most people have never carried yeah. that much around. Right. You're making yourself a target. Why, why would you do that? A couple so hundred bucks. a black card? I'm not doing that. Not personally, not me personally. Mm -mm. Okay. No, I'm, I have a trust. I have a private okay. trust and I'm diverting it into those different categories and ferreting it out accordingly. So I don't own anything. There you go. There you go. That's it. We own nothing, just manage. And I'll have that information down that part. as well. All right, everyone. Thanks again for joining us with John Dowling on Upfront and the Prophetic. Bless you all. We love you.